Well, hello and welcome back. We are on day 16 of 31 days of this journey through the Proverbs. Hopefully you've had a chance to just take a deep breath, be present with the Spirit and how the Spirit will guide you uh, and guide your mind through these verses. Just let them wash over you. Let's see what happens. Let's dive into our text for the day. Proverbs chapter 16, starting in verse 1, says, The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the motives. Commit your deeds to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. The Lord has made everything for its own end, yes, even the wicked for a day of evil. Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. They will certainly not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is atoned for. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues with injustice. A man's heart plans his course, but the Lord directs the steps. Inspired judgments are on the lips of the king. He will not betray his mouth. Honest balances and scales are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag are his work. It is an abomination for kings to do wrong, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings. They value one who speaks the truth. The king's wrath is a messenger of death but a wise man will pacify it. In the light of the king's face is life. His favor is like a cloud of the spring rain. How much better it is to get wisdom than gold. Yes, to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride goes before destruction, and an arrogant spirit before a fall. It is better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to divide the plunder with the proud. He who heeds the word finds prosperity. Whoever trusts in the Lord is blessed. The wise in heart will be called prudent. Pleasantness of the lips promotes instruction. Understanding is a fountain of life to one who has it. But the punishment of fools is their folly. The heart of the wise instructs his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way which seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. The appetite of the laboring man labors for him, for his mouth urges him on. A worthless man devises mischief. His speech is like a scorching fire. A perverse man stirs up strife. A whisperer separates close friends. A man of violence entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. One who winks with his eyes to plot perversities 
one who compresses his lips is bent on evil. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is attained by a life of righteousness. One who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. One who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Well, considering I've got a bit of a gray beard, I would love to focus on verse 31, which says, gray hair is a crown of glory, it is attained by a righteous life. However, um, I'm not really sure that's exactly <laughs> what that verse means. I think what it means is that gray hair, that's usually what really, really old people have. And you don't get to be a really, really old person, certainly not at the time that this was written, without making some wise decisions in your life. Well, yeah, I got a little gray, but it doesn't mean I'm a righteous person. So we'll <laughs> skip that version, verse, and we're going to go on to the other verse that I chose, which is verse 25. And verse 25 says, There is a way which seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. I personally have really struggled with this verse for most of my life. It It's kind of like, almost like a catch-22. It's like, well, how do you know what to do then? What What is the right way? Um, and if, if you've ever heard this verse, there's a verse in uh, Acts chapter 15 and verse 28 where it says, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. And of course, this was the council that was convening in, um, uh, in, in the book of Acts in the New Testament. They were trying to figure out, you know, what do we do for these new believers? And they, they prayed about it and they talked amongst each other. And all they could come up with was, well, it seemed good. <laughs> it seemed like the right thing to do. I mean, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit. And so when, when I read that verse and it says there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death, it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, I, I prayed about it. I got advice. It seemed like the right thing to do, but you're telling me that it ends in death? What in the world does this verse mean? And I think what has helped me to get a little bit more insight into this is if you exchange the word seems with the word feels. So if you read it and say, there's a way that feels right to a man, but in the end it leads to death, has a little bit more of an interesting, aha, I think I get it. Uh, because there's definitely a difference between praying about something, getting advice, and making your best guess versus just doing whatever feels right to you. Uh, just because something feels right doesn't necessarily mean it's the wisest thing to do. In fact, it may end in destruction. And you can think about that in terms of like relationships. Well, you know, it just felt like the right thing to do, you know, taking this person out and uh, doing something um, unbiblical or whatever. It just it felt so good. It felt so right at the time, man. But that may end in destruction making really large purchases that you don't have the money for. Oh, it just felt so right. It felt like the right thing to do at the time. Um, investments, get rich schemes. Um, getting involved in these things might feel like the right thing to do. There, there may be a very clear, easy, wide, obvious path before you and you might get a thrill out of it and it might make you temporarily feel really alive and give you a rush but there just may be hell to pay for that and the reason I say that is because in Matthew chapter 7 and verses 13 and 14 Jesus said you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate the highway to hell is broad and it and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few will ever find it. 
interesting now when you go back and you read that verse again, verse 25, where it says, there is a way which seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Makes a little bit more sense now. And so my affirmation for this verse is, I consider my options wisely and thoroughly. I consider my options wisely and thoroughly. Well, that's my takeaway. Now what I want to do is focus on a takeaway that is brought to us uh, from Tim from Mesa, Arizona. Tim is focusing on uh, verse, uh, or uh, right, verse 24 from this chapter. He says, Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. That's verse 24, and what he has to say about it is, I think this is a really good scripture to remember in these divided and dark times. Our country needs to heal and unify, and of course he's talking about the United States, which is going through a bunch of tumult right now. So as we continue to navigate so many complex issues, we need to show maximum grace towards one another in, our, in both our hearts and speech. And Tim's affirmation for us today is, I look to build others up by using gracious words. Mm, what a great affirmation. I look to build others up by using gracious words. Love that. Tim, thanks so much for sharing your takeaway and your affirmation with the community. So grateful for that. And if you, the viewer, if you would love to share something with us, we would love to hear what you have to say. Please consider leaving a comment in our comment section, whether it's just a, an affirmation that you came up with or a takeaway that you got from today's reading. Would love to hear it. And if you have any questions, uh, you, need, you want to reach out, we're here for you. Uh, in the uh, description area, there's some information on how to connect with us and a little bit more information about our lesson for today. I want to thank you so much for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you back here again tomorrow for Day 17. Take care.